Hey friends, I'm Daniel Nesbitt, and we're back designing a serif font in Glyphs Mini. So in the last episode, we pretty much played a little bit of catch up with the uh, letters that we had designed in both the upper and lower case. And so in this episode, we've pretty much got, well, actually we do have uh, the same letters in uppercase and lowercase that we need to design. So in today's episode, we're going to start our focus on the angled letters. And I think for this uh, first one we're going to tackle will be the V. Uh, I'm going to choose the V for one main reason, which is that it's going to form a lot of uh, things for other letters, especially like the W. Uh, I think we can also work out the angles a little bit so that when we get to letters like the X, uh, that we have kind of a better idea of what we're expecting for um, for the angles on that letter as well when it, when it makes the cross uh, in its letter form. So we are just going to dive in and see what we can make here. And to start, I'm just going to grab one of these sides here. So this is going to have a, uh, a pointed bottom probably. And actually, I just realized as I'm doing this, um, what I may want to do is actually just have this come to a point. And part of the reason that I'm thinking that is that it does then match up pretty well with uh, kind of the style that we have in a lot of our other letters um, where it, you know, you can see on the uh, U when I back out here in a moment. Um, we, we've kind of got this point going on here, so I think it would probably be a good idea to capture that for this letter. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, just kind of focus on one side right now, and I know I've kind of got a mess going on here. Um, I'm going to do my best to remember that this point down here is... Uh, the point so I can re uh, remove that reference. And then uh, one thing that we're just going to triple check here. So I've got 170 points wide here. It's going to be actually 175 points or 170 points there, I should say. Um, but like I've said in in, in the past, um, you know, we, we've got to figure out kind of this angle instead, which looks like it's, it's probably closer to 180. Um, so there's probably going to be a little bit of back and forth here. And actually, looking at this, I may even bump that in a little bit so we make this a little bit narrower. Um, but we'll see how that goes. So there's going to be a little bit of playing around here. <laughs> um, and we'll see if that point works. Because actually now the other thing that I'm looking at is if, if we actually just go ahead and, and roll with that point, let's make it too pointy and uh, that would make for an interesting letter I think um, but let's just kind of get things oriented here uh, actually we'll do it this way I'm just going to grab the whole thing and that way I know that I have my serif at the top moving along with it So that certainly is going to be quite the point uh, at the bottom. Um, that's, that's a bit much. Uh, I'm sure you would agree with that. Um, so let's see how we can work this a little bit. Um, so one thing that I do know is when we're designing uh, letters like this that we do kind of want to have a bit of a taper going on here just so that there's not a whole lot of uh, space kind of getting uh, built up here. Um, and the other thing that I have to keep in mind too is that this is probably going to be a bit wider uh, than it is right now and I think I'm going to use a copy of the U in the background here um, just to try and, and get a feel for where maybe this should be out to and this might actually help us on a few things here so, just kind of nudge these in. And it looks like I'm pretty close to a happy place here. Beautiful. All right. So now that we kind of have that point going on there, I'm just going to move this U 
down a little bit. So it does kind of have the width now, which I'm reasonably happy with, but now we have to work on the weight, because um, there's, there's kind of a lot going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I know after I put that taper in, I'm going to go and immediately take it out, um, which I think that is there. I just kind of want a clean slate, though. That's the whole reason that I'm doing this. And actually, when I uh, when I pulled the side down here, you can even see that this one actually got out of sorts a little bit. So let's just get that back to kind of a good starting point here. And then the other thing that I'm looking at is that these uh, serifs on either side seem to be a bit uh, excessive. So um, we're going to bump those in. Maybe something like that. And the other thing that I'm wondering too, as we're looking at this, is would it be too much to ask to put them on the other side? Maybe not. I guess we're going to find out here. It does kind of close up the top quite a bit though. Make sure I only grab the piece that I need there as I was moving an extra node around. Didn't want that. There we go. So, not too bad. Um, but if I look at this space here versus that space there, it looks like these outer ones could still stand to come in a good chunk. So, we'll bump those in a little bit more. I think that looks a little bit more even. Um, so, not too bad. It, uh, it still looks narrow. As I muck up, there we go. <laughs> so I'm just gonna see how far I can kind of push this out and really just kind of focus on the, uh, the width right now. And get some of these placed a little bit better. So it does open up that, that middle gap a little bit, which I'm okay with. Um, and then as far as this goes, it's it's probably going to end up being about as wide, maybe a, maybe a little bit more. I'm not counting that bottom serif in the corner there, so it's going to definitely be a little bit wider. Um, but I just want to create the illusion that these would be approximately the same width. And um, I think we're kind of getting somewhere close with that. The other thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to use the O's side bearings for the time being. I'll probably come back. I definitely will come back and uh, we'll get those cleaned up a little bit better, but I think that'll uh, that'll help those out. And then just kind of even up these points here a little bit. Uh, so then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to nudge it down a little bit. So visually this looks like it's kind of the same width, um, but in actuality they do taper down a little bit. And um, Let's get that center point lined up a little bit better as well. So it looks like it's more over the top. And then it's just determining how much I want to taper down, and that's probably a little too much. For a display weight, I, I'm going to be able to get by with a bit less uh, than I would if I was doing uh, something else. but. Uh, I think that'll work. I'm also going to go ahead and kind of just thicken up those lines a little bit as well. So if I back out a little bit, that, that V still does look a bit on the light side. And so I think we can maybe do a little bit better job fixing that. Um, so I'm just going to go a lot thicker. And so if I back that up now, and now I don't know that that works so well. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bump this down just a little bit more. So I think that'll help. Um, but I'm going to back that off and that off. And I'm, I'm just kind of doing some very coarse changes right now while I figure this out. Uh, because the challenge is with these angled letters is um, you definitely, it, it's a much different shape than things like the U. Um, and the other tough part with this as well is 
I really don't want to mimic too much of these straight sides where the V then begins to look like a U. Um, I do want to have somewhat of a different uh, shape or different look to it. So I am trying to keep that in mind as well. Um, but that said, it is pretty tempting to uh, perhaps change that up a little bit. Should we change it up a little bit? Let's try it. Because I do have one other idea. And this is the joy of type design, right? It's second-guessing everything you just designed. <laughs> so here's what I was thinking while I was making that comment, was um, we probably want to cut it off, let's say there, so I don't need all that. But what I was thinking when I said that was um, if we... We just kind of work out a width here. We're going to bring that U back in just as kind of a reference. And then I'm going to grab all of these pieces. We'll get that moved over to about there. So what I was thinking is if we get this point and this point to match up, and I think I'm going to bring my U back one more time just to triple check that, yes, I'm in the right place there. Uh, so I was going to do something like this, get rid of these points, and then effectively we'll just beef that up a little bit and then take the whole thing, which I probably did that out of order. That's fine. But maybe this makes a stronger V, or maybe it just makes a really weird looking one. <laughs> I may just put this to a vote in the comments if I'm even going in the right direction. Because um, right now I don't know if this is even working either. But uh, we'll figure it out. So, um, but I am kind of wondering if this does help a little bit with at least the initial problem we, we had in the earlier version where it was just like this. Um, it's getting there, but these definitely need to move down. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, control click here. I'm going to do open corner so I get my pizza shape back there. And then just kind of bump these around a little bit till everybody cooperates. So... I think that's actually a little bit better. Um, we'll get the metrics updated there too, which it looks like it is. And um, I mean, it's certainly, you definitely can feel that it's a different shape. I guess what I'm kind of looking at here is, you know, would I need to go down a little bit more? Does it help to maybe give it the, the sides a little bit more? Um, you know, I think it still feels like a V so I don't think I'm too worried about that as much anymore. Um, it certainly is a unique shape, though. Uh, and I can't really think of too many V names. Um, I guess mauve. That's the first one that comes to mind. Um, but that's actually a helpful word, too, because I can see how this interacts um, with things like the U there. I think it's different enough. Um, so I, I think I'm going to go with this. And try not to talk myself out of it too much. So, um, what we'll do then is we're going to do Moav in uppercase. And uh, I think this should translate fairly easy. Um, that will be the benefit of this. And again, I'm just going to use the cap O for my side bearings. Um, you can definitely see there's gonna be some kerning going on here, but that's fine. Uh, so this was the challenge that I was actually a little bit worried about because uh, with the lowercase u, you have the spur on the right side and you can kind of use that to tell which is which. Uh, with this one though, it gets a little bit more difficult because the uh, uppercase u definitely has a lot of the same vibe as the uppercase v now. What I was thinking for this, though, was to just move this up a little bit more. 
And my two reasons for that is number one, it, it kind of helps uh, with the shape a little bit. But the other thing is it, it just visually sets it apart a lot more. Uh, I am going to use the uppercase U though, just to help me out with a few things here. Uh, namely, just kind of getting some of these these lines in place the way I want them. Which actually wasn't too far off, so good news there. Um, it's not too bad. I, I think just having that extra little little bit helps there. Um, it's certainly a unique looking V though, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but we'll own it. So uh, the next one that I was going to work on was the W. And for this one, this will hopefully be a little bit easier. I'm just going to use the N. Um, actually, I should stay consistent, I suppose. We'll put the O on there. So get that little little bit of extra help there. Uh, and then pretty much just double the width. Um, and get rid of one set of serifs there in the middle because I don't need them. And so the thing with the W now that I can do is... Uh, I am going to narrow it up a little bit. And I just need to determine how much I want to narrow it up by. So we're going to do by 20 there just for starters. And um, get my metrics updated. Yeah, it looks like this was a little bit. Make that a little bit wider there. Um, so, I mean, you can kind of see that that's, that's where that's going, um, which I think that should be okay. And then just kind of the same thing that we did before, uh, rather than using the lowercase though, and actually I should triple check here real quick, because I may have some additional overlap. Yeah, there we go. Um, but rather than copying the lowercase w and, and doing like we did with the v, what I'm going to do in this case is actually grab the uppercase v, and I want to use that as kind of my jumping off point instead for this. So we will take that, line it up, get rid of my duplicate pieces here, and then just figure out the width. So I'm just... Oops. I'm just going to do 20 points, which is what I did on the lowercase. And I think this just gives me a starting point. And then we'll do the capo for that. So um, again, don't mind the kerning because there's some weird stuff going on there. But I think that's enough that it just kind of helps establish what that that looks like. And I think width-wise we're doing okay. Um, if I just... I'm going to throw the word made underneath there. Um, the M is a little, I suppose I really can't do much here, but um, the M does look a little bit narrower. And I suppose the one way we can triple check that is just do something like this. Um, but again, it's the challenge that I have here is, um, you know, if I start making this too narrow, then how does that affect the serifs along the top here. I could go through and maybe do something like this, um, like I did with the M where the center section didn't come all the way down to the baseline. I don't know if that works as well here, but we'll give it a shot and see. I think that just looks a little bit too weird though for me. Yeah, that's kind of a goofy shape. Um, let's go with a different word. Maybe that changes perspective a little bit. So maybe that's actually not too terrible. I I think I'm going to let that just marinate for a bit, and we'll see how that shapes up. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do real quick is uh, I do need to fix... Now that I made that adjustment, I need to make sure my line widths are all kind of happy again here, which I think they are. 
So I think it at least narrows it up enough now that it looks more in line with the M. Um, and hopefully it's not too out there. If I just kind of jump back here real quick, uh, it does cut off the serifs a little bit, which is not helpful, but it at least gives me kind of a, a clear picture, a clear idea of, of where we're at. And I don't think we're actually too far off. So uh, moving on, the next one that I was going to tackle was the Y. Now in other typefaces, I probably would use the V for this, but one of the things that I had in mind was to actually use the U. Uh, and then for the uh, leg or the tail, um, I'm kind of torn between the J and the T. Uh, they each kind of have their own pros and cons here. Uh, I'm going to start with the J though, because I think that hook might actually work the best on this. Um, I also didn't really set a super low uh, descender height here, so I'm kind of making this up as I go a little bit. Um, but if I grab the P uh, and make sure that I get the right one, that may just kind of help inform me a little bit of where I need to go. So one of the things that I can do too with the Y is um, I can actually just grab it and just kind of move this up a little bit. I think I can actually just purely get away with that. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to line up this side of the letter and I'm going to get it lined up with this portion there. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this is I think it's actually going to work out a lot better. Um, just grab the J here so I can kind of get this back in place. Isn't too far off. There we go. So we'll take the J, remove that. Um, so what my thought was, was that it's probably easier to extend this line out a little bit. Um, but we'll see how this goes here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I'm actually going to open that corner as well. And we're going to grab this and we're going to slide it all the way over. That is going to make... That is going to make this look a little bit weird, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to also do the same thing here as well. And the reason that I'm doing this is it's it's just allowing me some extra control um, because I do have kind of some good, good shapes moving along here, and I don't want to really disrupt a lot of these things too much. Um, the other bonus too then is uh, we can kind of get these to cooperate after the fact a little bit more. So... Get those in like that. And then for down here, we're going to just do an open corner. And one nice thing, I think I'm actually just discovering this in uh, in Glyphs 3, is, or uh, sorry, the, this isn't Glyphs 3, that's, the other, that's a different one. Um, but what I am noticing is that it's actually taking care of the overlap there, which is actually kind of handy. So fun little detail in Glyphs Mini for you. Um, so we'll just get those lined up a little bit better, uh, cause usually what I'm, what I'm pointing out here is I've got an open corner here, but, um, Glyphs is actually smart enough to realize I don't want that little piece of pizza hanging off the corner there and it's automatically cleaning it up. So, uh, that's actually really good to know. I'm not sure how I've missed that one, but that's one of the joys of this series or really this whole channel is discovering all these fun things along the way. Um, so that's where we land there, and actually now that I look at the Y, I probably didn't really need to bring that up as high as I did. Um, I don't know if I want to go down as low as the P. Maybe I do. How low did that go? We're about even there. Uh, so that actually surprisingly works out a lot better than I thought it was. Um, so what I'm going to do for this is we're going to do the lowercase n on both sides. That actually looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty solid. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here real quick. So the one thing that I do want to take care of, though, is uh, I do want a couple of these angles to line up a little bit better. And the one thing that I'm looking at here is if I make a copy and paste of that, uh, you'll see probably right where I'm looking, um, and that is to get that to line up a little bit better that way. And then we'll just kind of bring those two up a little bit more as well. So then that way we've got a nice uh, parallel thing here. Um, as far as that opening one, though, 
debating. So if I go back and I look at my G, and maybe that was the one I actually should have... Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> um, that might have actually been the better one to pick, hey? Uh, oh well, live and learn. Um, yeah, I think we're going to do that. I don't know if people actually shout at their computer screens while they watch me do this kind of stuff, but if you were shouting at your computer screen waiting for me to figure this out, um, my apologies. <laughs> I have to learn to poke fun at myself, um, especially when I'm the only person who uh, is sitting here on this. Um, but I think that might actually work out a little bit better. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get these things lined up here. And it would appear that my, uh, my visual indicators are not giving me feedback that I need to let me know that that's now lined up perfectly that way. And so what we'll do is maybe just kind of fake this into looking like it's all lined up. So we'll grab all of that and all of that. So that actually does look quite a bit better. We'll get rid of the parts of the G we didn't need there. Um, I think that's going to be okay. I am going to move this up a little bit more just to open up that space a little bit. Um, so we kind of do get at least visually a bit of a similar space there. Um, they may not technically be the same, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is just kind of line these points up a little bit better. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but I think that'll work out fairly well. And then, just because I'm curious, I could go through and do a proper uppercase um, Y, which I might, but make sure I edit the right character here. Not the E, we want the Y. There we go. Um, but I'm kind of intrigued by this idea that that actually could be the cap letter, too. Um, Just see how that looks, and then uh, actually, yelp might be a better, <laughs> better word to use. Um, not bad. But now that I'm looking at this here, one thing I I think I am going to adjust is. Uh, Maybe something like that. And I'm probably going to do this on the lower case as well when we get there. Uh, back to that in a moment. We'll kind of get all these lined up here. I think that works a little bit better. The uppercase too, I do get a little bit more uh, freedom to, to kind of bring that down a little bit. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at here is just kind of thickening up these strokes a little bit as well. So it kind of thickens it up a little bit. Kind of gives it a fun shape there. So uh, I'm just going to jump back to this one here. I'm going to throw the uppercase below it, and I think I am going to go ahead and... It just kind of felt like this was getting too far off to the side there. So if we just kind of take this and just make some quick adjustments here. That actually does kind of open it up pretty well too. Um, I'm going to throw the lowercase g next to it again just uh, to do what we were talking about a little bit earlier where, again, they kind of look the same. With the uppercase, I'm not as worried about that because I really, I'm gonna triple check, I'm pretty sure I don't have anything that's gonna the line up exactly like that. Um, but there we go. Yeah, I think that'll work out fairly well. So one thing I am gonna jump back, um, because this will probably bug me to no end. <laughs> 
is uh, I am going to take this and just just kind of widen this out a little bit more. And actually, now that I know the open corner trick, I'm also going to do this as well. Because um, what I'm thinking is that this could stand to be just a tad wider. And then... Just pop that back up a little bit there as well. Because it does kind of help looking at it uh, over the G there. Um, it definitely just has a different vibe or a different feel to it. Um, ironically, the other thing that I'm looking at too is that it feels like I got my Ys backwards. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you in a minute here. But um, with this, this larger bowl here on the lower case, I actually feel that that work, would work better on this one. And then take this one and just push it into the lower case. I actually I don't know how I manage that, but um, there you go. So now I gotta play, find the upper case. There we go. And I'm just gonna grab that and uh, we'll move that back up here. And yeah, that actually works out quite a bit better. So we get these all set up there. Now if I go back, yeah, that actually seems like it, it kind of plays a little bit better. Kind of odd how that worked, but um, not sure if I maybe just got them even mixed up. So I think that's actually looking pretty darn good right now. And um, yeah, this is actually shaping up pretty well. So we have some fun characters uh, for the next episode that I think I'm going to leave, um, namely the K, S, X, and Z and uh, each of those kind of have their own little special quirks and, and ways that we're going to approach this design, but uh, we should be able to get those knocked out in pretty short order. So overall, I have to say this is actually coming together a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, way back when we did that first type cooker to uh, effectively come up with this design, I really had no idea what I was uh, planning or getting into. And I mean, to be honest with you, I've never really designed a typeface with character like this before. Uh, so if anything else, this has definitely been a fun exercise just to push myself out of my comfort zone or out of my bounds a little bit and just try something a little bit different. And um, I mean, overall, I would say it's it's been a lot of fun and uh, it's just been interesting to, to get a different result than another sans serif or, you know, even another serif for that matter. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with where things are going right now, but if you have any ideas or thoughts or comments, especially on how those letters today, I'll just kind of leave it open for uh, the V, W, and Y. Uh, what are you thinking about them? Do they look all right to you? Are they looking a little bit funky? Um, what would you do differently? I guess I'll throw that out there as well. Um, so if you have any input like that or um, just any tips or tricks that you care to share, uh, by all means, hit up that comment section below. If you're enjoying uh, my sans ser or my serif series, um, be sure to also hit that like and subscribe button as well. Uh, I've really been excited this year watching this channel grow and just being able to see some of the feedback um, that I've been getting has been absolutely amazing from everyone. Uh, so I just want to you know make sure that we're continuing to grow and reaching out to other people who might be interested in designing uh, a font or even just interested in the art of type design. So. Uh, every little bit is always appreciated. And then the last thing I will note as well, if uh, you're just catching uh, this episode, uh, in the last episode, I had mentioned that I am starting a new newsletter uh, for 2021. It's already actually got a couple uh, issues out already. Uh, it's called Letter Form. And if you visit www, or actually no www, um, but if you visit uh, letterform.email, it's kind of a goofy domain, but it's clever, it's catchy. Uh, you can go and uh, not only take a look at uh, some of what the past issues include, but uh, also go ahead and sign up for that as well. But more or less, uh, it's just kind of my way of giving small tips and tricks, uh, maybe things that I've been doing on the channel here, but uh, just little different things that will help you if you're designing letters, whether you're a lettering artist or a type designer or anything in between. Maybe you just want to learn how to draw letters better. Um, the whole point is just teaching those little tips and tricks that I know uh, and just passing that knowledge along. So uh, hopefully you'll find that to be a super valuable newsletter. So as always, I'll get off my soapbox and uh, say thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.